It's Damon Frank for Recovered Life, and I am back with our favorite life and recovery strategist, George Snyder. How you doing, George? Damon. Here we are. Another holiday season. Na- holiday season. This is I we, we were gonna actually call this the holiday edition, right? Right. But I guess we let the marketing department off for this one. So we just we had to come up with it ourselves. <laughs> Mariah Carey was busy with somebody else, you know. Exactly. We wanted to do one of those, you know, ball drops and Santa flying, you know, the whole thing, but it just wasn't in the budget this year with recovered life. Not this year. Next year. Next year, though. Next year, definitely. But you know, the topic, which is always why we get together, because we love your advice and your insight on stuff. The topic is going to be 100% all holiday, and it's what I've been hearing a lot of from friends, family, people in recovery about how horrible this Christmas is going to be because of COVID. And our topic right now is going to be how to make this the best COVID Christmas ever. 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 And that makes no sense. We know it makes no sense. It's probably not even grammatically correct, but you understand what we're talking about. I think we can do it though. I think we can. (laughs) I think we can. It's a big, it's a big topic, but I wanted to dive in because you are the host of the old school men's mastermind group and COVID. We really started the group because of COVID, right? And also the the COVID challenge. That was one of the first things that we did. And we really dove into the real huge shift that people were having in their life. I mean, and it's a big shift. I mean, we have people that were, working 24 seven, not working at all. Uh, you know, we're always gone and traveling, never traveling. Right. right? right. Huge shifts. Yeah. And I remember, I mean, people need to know this. It was Damon who said to me, he said, you know, I don't know this thing happening. I think, uh, I think we're probably going to be, we're all going to be, uh, doing work on zoom. And I said, I think you're overreacting Damon. And what's a zoom. And here we are here. I'm either a psychic or paranoid. I don't know which, but uh, I, you know what? I did feel it. There's been a shift. And, you know, look, we all know if, if, if you're listening to this, you know that there's been a shift in the recovery movement. And I think that maybe that's okay, you know? And, uh, but there's definitely going to be a, a, a shift this Christmas. I mean, Christmas is significantly different. Um, forget about the whole families getting together, friends getting together. That whole thing is weird, right? With all of the mandates and masks and, you know, people are scared and, you know, you have family members that are sick, but also shopping, food, everything is really different. Even just our perspective on the world, when you think about it, that what makes, and I've talked to people years ago who would go to China and say, oh, it makes me really nervous. See all these people wandering around in masks. You know, that makes you nervous, but a gathering of family and friends, why, what's that to be nervous about? And yet we are living in a world right now where they're precisely reversed in the way we perceive them. We should feel better knowing that people are taking precautions and we should be wary about gathering together in a range of people where grandma and grandpa could end up sick or gone. Well, and, I think you're I think you're bringing up something, though, George. Sorry to cut you off, but you're bringing up know. something that is a common thread with recovery, whether it is the holidays or not, that is fear of the unknown. Right. What's it going to be like? I can't control it. I, it control. was Christmas was always like this. It's not like this anymore. Control. The fear of the unknown and control, right? But then when you and with so much stripped away, with so much that we took for granted, that was all of a sudden in a matter of really for some of us in a matter of days, suddenly everything had changed, the entire landscape. And to take that all away, then you get to really focus on well, what really matters then. You know, how can I get into a get into a state of gratitude? Get into uh, how do I get into action? When there seems so many things that I would normally do, I, well, I can't do that. Well, I can't do that. Why I can't go there. I can't do this. Uh, And then how do I deal with that frustration? You know, I got into this, uh, I kind of dove into this with my vlog episode a couple weeks ago where, uh, you know, I focused on this always constantly being in a hurry. And this is one of the takeaways, uh, slow down this Christmas season, because I, you know, I know for me, family, a kid, the the whole thing. It's just so, 
It's just go, 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 go all the time. It's slowing down and just taking a moment and saying, I'm buying this gift. I'd normally go to the store, but now I'm just going to click a button and I'm going to slow down and enjoy the fact that I can buy this gift. And then I'm, and I know the person's going to like it. And to be honest, sometimes during Christmas, by the time Christmas rolls around, I, you know, I'm already burnt out. You know, it's just like, I'm not really sitting and appreciating. Burned you know, out or doing. numb. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Burned out or numb. You know, it's a yeah. numbing of our spiritual side. I think, I think all of that rushing is a way to, again, not feel mm -hmm. and to slow down. Somebody said to the Dalai Lama, I, 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 I want to do that. I want to get spiritual. I want to, I want to be one with God. What do I do? Where do I go? How do I go? And he said, sit down, mm -hmm. sit down down oh no 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 you don't understand where do i need to go what do i need to do how do i sit down to slow down to be present to what really what really is significant what really matters um and i think the the you you really kind of it's to, to also kind of savor that too like i'm gonna wrap a gift later tonight and I'm not the best gift wrapper. I'm going to be honest. I'm okay. I've learned over the years. Oh, I bet you're really good. I bet you're good. But I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm going to sit in in a room. I'm going to wrap it. And I'm, I'm just like, okay, how am I going to do this? And how what am I going to make it look like? And I'm going to really kind of take some time and kind of appreciate the fact that uh -huh. I was able to buy this gift, wrap this gift, give this gift. I think it's being, I remember years ago, I was thinking about this the other day, a guy came to me and he said, uh, I, you know, I want what you have. And I said, oh, that's, that's very nice of you to say. And he said, no, no, you, you, you don't have a good car. You know, your place isn't that nice and you're not married to a hot woman. So he said, uh, and I said, well, I'm, thanks. Yeah, I'm working on all of that, sort of. And mm. he said, but you seem happy. <laughs> and I thought, wow. You know, maybe wow. maybe it is not about this all of this stuff. Maybe it's not about all that doing. Maybe it is just being okay. You know, yeah. um, whether I've got the five cars and the house and the hills and all the rest of it, or I'm um, I'm on. You know, can I be okay with what I got? Well, this leads that's us really to gratitude. Challenging. Yeah, wow. what, it's it's beyond challenging. And you know, and you you kind of dove into gratitude about being grateful. You know, and I and I, and I want to mention that because I got to tell you something. If I was on one more text chain with gratitude lists, I, I literally was going to lose my mind, right? Like that's nothing that has ever worked with me. But it was funny because when we talked about this yeah. in the men's group, in the yeah. old school men's mastermind group, we dove in. It gratitude had a whole different feel to it than I had perceived it in recovery before. It's what you're focused on, what you're focused on, you know, you go where you look and yeah. what you're working on. That's what you're grateful for. You know, yeah. if you're not, yeah. you don't just take care of the car. It's not going to, it's not going to, you're not going to take care of it. It's not going to be, it's not going to be, you're not going to have it. So you, and, and I think again, the doing, it's the doing, it's the doing. What are we, what are we doing with what we've got? Mm -hmm. And can we be happy with what we've got? Can we be grateful so, for what we got? You know, we but know just to make a list, too, George. Mm -hmm. We we know. Sorry to cut you off, but we know as oh. coaches too that a lot of the time with with life coaching and recovery coaching, it's just trying to bring people into the here and now. How you become grateful, how you become aware, how you focus on what matters is coming right into the here and now. Yeah, I had a teacher say, he said, you know what, um, I'm going to give you a, a mantra. And I said, well, I don't believe in that. And he said, well, I don't really care if you do. <laughs> he said, but here's something to, because uh, you know, it's taming the mind. He said, here's your mantra. And it works, just so you know. He said, my life is full of abundance and love. And I'm just like, oh, you know, wow, talk about hokey. And uh, he said, just trust me on this. And I would do it at the gym and I would do it running and I would do it driving. And so that kind of, building up the awareness, you know, but then you got to act on it. Mm -hmm. Well, how would I, what is a person who is saying this to himself? How is he acting? You know, how is him, how am I behaving? 
And that's when you sort of kick in. It's not just making a list, but it's like, what am I doing? What am I working on? With everything stripped away and there's so much that I can't do, what am I doing with what I can? You know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Absolutely. That's, that's the power. And then you become so grateful for what you do have as opposed to so much of the flurry and the frenzy, which was really kind of a numbing, you know, we would be so frantic by the time Christmas Eve comes, you're not even aware of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I would even say too, the, the, the good thing about gratitude, when you, when you couple that with awareness and focus and you can not only do it. Okay. Which is what you said, but I always like to say, you know, and some of the biggest transformations that I've had with, with, with clients on the life side is when they're actually then go from doing it to looking for it happening in the world and identifying with that, pulling that in and saying, I am even part of this bigger experience, right? And then let it unfold. And I think, you know, um, so many people they come into recovery, they're rattled, they're physically and emotionally a wreck. And as they go, they're afraid, right? They're almost afraid to be grateful sometimes. But I think gratitude is it one powerful thing. It's the key that, al that unlocks the door to abundance yeah. and bigger things in your life in recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know, somebody said, and boy, is it a timely message now. Everything's contagious. Everything's contagious. Mm -hmm. So be around the people who have what you want to catch because you're going to get it. You know, be around that abundance that you want to have. But so much of the fear and judgment will keep us distant, keep us away from what it is we really want without even mm -hmm. realizing it. Mm -hmm. So, again, to say this, I'm grateful for one and two and three and four, that's great. But then what am I doing about that? What mm -hmm. kind of person that does that? You help me with that. You know, Who's the kind of guy? What's the kind of guy who does this or does that? If I weren't afraid, if I weren't, uh, if I weren't afraid, what would I do? You know, if I really believed in a higher power, if I really thought that a higher power had my back, what would I do? Yeah. And you begin to work your think your way through that process and then Im implement it, you know? And this is something that I really got out of the old school men's mastermind group. Um, because you have some of the, you know, look, we have very accomplished people in there. Yeah. And, you know, the focus on really determining what do I want. And that's a whole other. That's episode that I'm sure we'll yeah, do, we but do. you know, that's we a will. big one. And sometimes I just want to be okay right here, right now. And yeah. this is the opportunity I'm going to say for everybody, this is the opportunity for this Christmas. And this is how you can make it the best COVID Christmas ever is that we could all be right here right now yeah. and present in it and enjoy what we have with who we're with in the present situation yeah. and be totally okay with it. You know, everything's going to change. That's just the world. The world is constantly changing. Everything's going to change. It's things are going to, people are going to die. Things are going to die. They're going to grow old. The flowers wilt, you know, but they haven't in this moment yet. And that makes, if you think about it, it's not about focusing on what is that anticipation of, oh, it's all going to go away. But the fact that it hasn't yet in this moment, right here, right now, it is beautiful. It is alive. It is. So we do move from a sacred moment to a sacred moment. Mm -hmm. But it, it, we got to stay in this moment, not in the one that's coming, not in the fear of what could, not in that anticipation. We talked about this once, uh, the anticipation of the pain. Right here, right now, it's the best Christmas ever. Yes, right here. And we're just going to end it with that. Merry Christmas, everybody. And right here, right now, it right is now. the best Christmas ever. It is. Merry Christmas. Hey. Keep the conversation going. Join Recovered Life, a community of like-minded people who are looking to live their best recovered lives. Membership is free, and you can apply at recoveredlife.us.